addressing you on behalf of an organization that has existed for nearly 130 years. Since its inception as the Association of Collegiate Alumni, the fundamental mission of AAUW has always involved breaking through barriers for women and girls. It's hard to imagine a time when the prevailing belief was that education was harmful to women's health and happiness. But that was the situation confronting our founders. Some of you know the story. Back in 1881, Marion Talbot and Ellen Richards were among that very rare breed, female college graduates. They and 15 other Boston area alumni, graduates of institutions such as BU, Smith, Vassar, and Wellesley, were determined, quote, to ensure the value of their degrees, help extend the privilege of higher education, and help educated women fit into the community that would recognize their talents and potential. I quote from this wonderful article in the AAUW Outlook Spring Summer 2006 edition. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to do so. It's available on the website in the archives of the Outlook. Um, among other things, our foremothers challenged the writings of Dr. E.H. Clark, who wrote in 1872, quote, Identical education is a crime before God and humanity that physiology <laughs> protests against and experience weeps over. Now, as an English teacher, those dangling yeah. prepositions <laughs> are almost as offensive to me as the conclusion that Dr. Clark drew. But stepping up to the challenge, these stalwart women undertook a research project of their own in 1885 and arrived at the following conclusion. We can feel confident that higher education for women is in harmony with that vast law of survival of the fittest. <laughs> in keeping with that tradition, AAUW is still using research to dispel myths, reveal injustices, provide opportunities, and prompt reform. When issues such as gender bias and campus sexual harassment were being ignored, denied, swept under the carpet, AAUW published landmark research such as shortchanging girls and drawing the line to expose those wrongs to the light of day and impel citizens, educators, and elected officials to do something. Our body of research encompasses the spectrum from middle and high school girls to college women and women in the workplace, from the unfair tenure system on some campuses to the gender pay gap, and the factors that discourage women and girls from pursuing education and careers in science, math, technology, and engineering. All that research is not just interesting reading. It is the basis for numerous initiatives, such as this year's Campus Action Projects, grants from AAUW that will help groups of students and their advisors examine and confront barriers to STEM careers for women. Research, along with advocacy, philanthropy, and education, are the pillars of the platform on which we build our plan to change the world. But the focus today is on the campus world and the wealth of opportunities and mutual benefits when institutions sign on to become partner <coughs> members and when branches and states decide to become actively involved in the partnership. What motivates the work motivates me to do the work I do in this arena is my refusal to accept negative concepts such as hopeless or impossible and my firm belief that anything is possible especially if dedicated people work together toward a common goal. Here's what I see. Right now we have approximately 500 college university partner members. I can envision a time when every one of the 4,000 plus two and four year institutions in America joins our ranks, led by those schools here in the greater DC area. I can envision a time when every branch makes a commitment in some way through philanthropy, men mentoring, leadership programs to support our CU partners and their students. To me, the AA in AAUW also stands <laughs> for advocates and allies. I envision a time when a director of a women's center is so AAUW aware that she can phone a branch or state officer to ask for extra copies of drawing the line to use as a text in a class for her interns 
in the Violence Against Women Prevention Program. I envision a time when a branch leader knows exactly whom to contact, Dean of Student Affairs or some other official to say, we'd like to sponsor a Start Smart Salary Negotiations Workshop on your campus. Are you interested? Can we talk about it? I envision a time when a branch program vice president can pick up the phone to call the AAUW campus rep whose contact information she has right at hand. That way she can invite the students whom the branch sponsored to the National Conference for College Women Student Leaders, affectionately referred to as Nick, Nick Whistle. Whistle, thank you, <laughs> to speak at a meeting, to attend a special event, or even to be registered as a potential e-student affiliate member. I envision a time when a female faculty member can contact an AAUW member to say, the climate on this campus for women and minority students is horrible, but our president just doesn't get it. Can AAUW help? What sustains my can-do belief is that all of these things and more are happening now, somewhere on some campuses, within some branches, in some parts of the country. But it's not enough. In a little while, Cordy Galligan will be giving you more details on how you can take advantage of the plethora of possibilities and resources that our College University Partnership Program affords. In fact, in your, in your packets, there is a College University brochure and some other materials that I know you'll find helpful 